Hey guys, I know I'm killing you with this series. It's dragging on forever. I got a million things to do. Uh, I want to give you a preview though of how I think it will perform on the water based off of what I've done in the past. I don't have any public videos on the 12 foot little John boats or tinnies that I've done because of issues that I've ran into with people whose boats those were. And plus some of it was just super old technology. And then for, for a lot of reasons, those aren't viewable to the public. They're actually only viewable to YouTube channel members and patrons. But I can skim those down really quick for a video to show you how I think it will actually perform on the water and the results might surprise you. So this is how the previous generation Yak Killers performed with way less build quality than what we're sticking in this one now. So that should really, I think, give you a pretty good, pretty good idea of what you're going to get once you complete your, your project. If you're doing this, if you're doing one of these with me, if you're making your own John Yak now today, this is what you likely can expect out of it. And this is why I'm doing all this effort, making this my best boat yet and pushing it forward, even though it's taking forever. Sorry, but here we go. I can at least give you this today. So this is the first jump boat that I actually ever had. It was a 1232 Montgomery Ward. And it's still floating around Arizona somewhere today. I tried to buy it back from a few people. I gave it to one person. He immediately sold it. And then somebody sold again. Pretty annoying. It's like, I am offered a lot of money too. I don't know what the hell's up with these flakes. There's no, I'm not going to get outbid. I really want that boat back so I can like redo it the way I do things now. But here it is. And here's how my brain thought back in the day. And just really surprising. Because some of this stuff, looking at it now, I'm surprised I even thought of it. I just, I don't really, can't account for how my brain works in certain odd ways. But, you know, we ran down pine studs. And I had the idea to port the wood because I did have some sort of sense that wood was fairly heavy. So I thought porting the wood with a hole saw, which is very, very tasky. And I don't know how much it really did in term, terms of weight shaping. We did actually get some substantial weight savings out of it. I don't know if I would call it substantial, but it was there. But this is my first, what I would call the Utilidec core. And we always talked about the core, the core principles. Everybody wonders where the core came from. The could think the core came from aluminum. No, it came from this one. I just took it offline because you know, this video, I would say this John boat actually made my channel because for a while, even though this was made out of wood and it was heavy and everybody complained, and everybody said it was a floating death trap. This was actually, in terms of ideas, where the ideas spurred, this was, I think, maybe miles ahead of anything else anybody else had out there. Everything else was basic, whether it was out of wood or aluminum. I was trying to make this core the simple way for people to kind of form their boat together. And that was the bigger process of it all here. And this is my first utility. It was out of wood pine studs then i had the idea to make a dry hatch lip an under carry lip and it, obviously this has been done over and over by the boat companies this isn't but i kind of try to duplicate it out of wood this is how i did it i sealed the edges and this actually worked pretty well i made giant giant bleed off ports into each of the side compartments uh people complained through my other boat builds because i think this is like my third or fourth boat build overall where i had the uh the manifold i had i had the obviously the insight to paint the core with oil-based enamel to try and seal it in. And that's, I got that from a Lowe's representative saying low oil-based enamel will go into the wood, soak into the pores and seal it in. And it should be good, at least for our climate. Maybe not for like a, you know, people try this in very humid climates. Also right here, I screw through the side of the hull above the water line into the redwood studs. And the redwood was extremely flexible. I tried to do that with pine studs, run the pine studs down the, the cord like that. It wouldn't, they wouldn't bend. It was pretty horrible so but the redwood studs did the little one by twos there we cut out our parts we painted them we carpeted them i used bunk carpet bunk carpet was like my savior i got it from lowe's it was like a 50 cents a foot or something it was really cheap and you know it's just starting out i didn't initially have that much money for these projects i mean the inner side wall that i did now i think that's actually pretty useful i should just duplicate that like the double wall with foam inside of it pretty it's pretty cool i think th actually maybe the the side foam walls i think were maybe my favorite thing i used uh i think 360th inch hardwood plywood to skin the walls and they gave me a platform to actually make all my compartments and before i was making them flip from from the inside out so the compartments would all kind of flip off reverse based off the little joiner down there but uh making those little side walls actually fixed it and i was all huge about foam and vibration dampening and all that and so a, a pretty big part of this boat was foamed. Now the bigger argument from everybody was, oh, it's heavy, it's a million pounds, it's out of wood, and blah, 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 blah. 
And so that really got, got it. There's about half people that really, really love this boat. And then there was X amount of people that would come on and tell me that I was a moron and that I shouldn't be influencing people like this because what if somebody actually tries to replicate this? And there were people that actually did try to replicate this. I think they had fairly good results, probably better woodworking than I was. Not obviously a woodworker by any means, but I did have this idea of what I wanted. I mean, those are just standard hinges you bought from the hardware store. I painted them over so they wouldn't rust, put them on top. I didn't personally care. People complained about them. They said it hurt their OCD to look at the, I mean, I'm always about functionality over looks, always. Remember, I try to make everything look good, but it, but at the end of the day, I will never sacrifice like looks for functionality. It'll, it'll be the, always be the other way around. And so if I see a boat and they're like, isn't it look great? I'm like, is it very functional? Look at all this voided space, all this crap. And they're like, yeah, well, but it looks good. Well, I mean, that's great, but how functional is it? Like, what did you actually achieve aside from putting a deck in your boat? So I really went all out to try and make this max efficiency mod. Obviously, I didn't know as much as I did now. My, I guess what you say, you know, knowledge, my awareness of how much weight actually needed to go into the boat versus, you know, the water displacement and how, how dangerous that was, that wasn't really there. So this boat was actually, I would say, fairly dangerous. One good wave would have sunk me, despite how much foam I put in here. But I stuck, you know, I I would think that I probably would sink. I didn't have any extra reserve buoyancy aside from the foam sheets on the bottom and obviously the foam panels on the side, but I just don't think that standalone would have held this boat up by, its, by itself because it was fairly heavy. Although I did, and I was able to move it with just trailer dollies by myself because I had stored it over at my mother-in-law's house, at which time we found out really what weather and sun will do to a wood frame and a wood deck within a matter of months. And so this got ruined. I mean, I even used OSB, and that was stupid. I, I would recommend nobody use OSB ever, ever, for, uh, for a boat deck. I know it works great for a house. I know it theoretically it would last longer on a house, but it is weaker, and it will degrade a lot faster. Water just ruins OSB. But some of this stuff was pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's just a testimony of what my thoughts were and love or hate this boat this was kind of the pinnacle of all the ideas everything that came out of this boat like are put through and all the other builds so all these all these major ones you see the lawn the Illumicraft, my boat etc you know even my partners ryan and nate and everybody like it's a lot of those ideas were kind of founded here when we tried to unify the tiny boat nation very shortly after i think this boat was built it was a, it was a thing. I tell you, it was pretty fun. It was my old Merc four, four horse that I sold for like three hundred bucks, like a moron. Should have kept that motor. It was dope. Just some basic ideas. Just running the wood, running the wood joiners. I mean, I made up my own names and terminology. I got a lot of complaints from people in the trade saying, "What does that mean? What are you referring to?" Because you know, actual terminology as a professional tradesman, I just I didn't have it. I was an office jockey. I was doing the most beta male job ever. And definitely that took a toll on me later. And one of the things that kept me grounded during that job was building things like this and getting all that stuff going. I mean, I like that, like the rod locker, the little side compartment here. I mean, sometimes I even struggle to make some of this now when I'm like formulating my own ideas. And I'm always peeking for max storage, max this, max that. This video, when I tried to retrofit it in here to give you guys a breakthrough that the frame was so small. I don't know if this is like 540p. I don't know, it was super old though. I, I film, edited, and produced everything off of an older Galaxy phone, just the Android phones. That's how I did it all. That's how I got through my early YouTube days. And I will say that this boat is actually what got me through all my old YouTube days also. This boat, for whatever reason, continued to trend, even when all my other videos kind of spiked and fell off. This one was just always getting hits always getting viewed it would go up and down in trends but it would always get introduced to new people and i honestly think it was this boat that you know it kind of made my channel in many ways you like to think it was all these other ones no it was this one i just i just took it off because obviously we found new principles we found better ways and i i thought it was just not very genuine to keep this thing up and then people seeing it and replicating it just because it was a more obtainable goal and we have better practices now which brings me to my next crucial point and learning lessons, because it's so deceiving how well a boat may perform in your eyes 
when everybody else is telling you it's garbage and telling you it's a floating death trap and you'll be like yeah well me and my son or me and another person went on this little boat and we fished and it was just fine and stable it doesn't sink it doesn't look like it's gonna sink yeah it's odd how much weight you can actually stick inside a boat before you actually really start to see some compromising actions it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe but it's deceiving especially if you don't have you know that many boats done like i have 20 plus you know my partners who i, I go through with the tin can crew all have 10 plus nate's probably actually well above me now it just performed so deceivingly well for me that i was just thinking how the hell can a kayak ever compete with something like this i mean respect to everybody i guess in the kayak industry you guys have done great things for people um for minimalist fishing for like affordable fishing for i guess what you would call small boat fishing but you know in these recent years i wonder how any of your engineers still have jobs how you haven't just been outright competed i don't know if there's somebody cramming down ideas saying no you can't release this yet but i just to push the narrative that most yakkers push in terms of what's stable and what's not i mean we're, we're on arguably the baddest kayak on the planet the hobie 14 foot 360 mothership pro angler was it impressive i mean for what it was i guess <laughs> i would say the most impressive thing about it was the drive this thing moves. the drive was awesome like, the thing could swim sideways it could do 360s and turn back around i mean okay. uh, that's i think i think if you're going to argue for why a yak might be better over a john boat the drive system might be like the only thing you could really say is decent the ability to put a drive system in one of these things but other than that it's all the other narrative these people pushing this narrative that somehow a kayak is just as stable as a john boat it is not it's not even close and this one is fairly wide i think it's 33 34 inches 32 inches at the bottom and it does this little kind of pontoon thing where it kind of bubbles in to offset the roll and it does do that but it's just not anything like a john boat like what this does this is legitimate stability i can walk up and down this thing like a boss and it handles fairly well and this is not even that well built and so when we really build this thing when we really trick these things out not only is it going to be light enough to be truck bettable but it's going to have all this storage it's not going to be plastic it's going to be more stable and it's only 12 feet i mean that's my whole my whole big reason behind why i just simply at the end of the day don't even want to touch a plastic kayak it's five thousand dollars for what what are you really getting so i wonder why the trends have been pushed that so people have had to have seen or at least thought that yeah they're look they're cool looking they're shiny they're plastic they're all neonish but i mean who here like thinks that maybe the kayaks are kind of full of shit? another one i want to tell you is this one if you thought the last one we talked about just right now that 1232 series was impressive i think this one is really where i considered it a success the other one i considered a failure for many reasons but this one i did it and this is an 11 and a half foot tinny this is a montgomery ward i think sea king not sure what it was but again with the switching around the turning around the framing the doing all that it was out of wood but it was out of redwood which is less than half the density of pine studs it actually equals the weight of an aluminum frame so i strongly advocated for redwood the one mistake that i did though for both wood frames was i carpeted them and carpet just holds onto water and that's bad so what literally would have made this frame last and what i did later on in my boat because my main boat now even today still has a redwood core frame but it's wrapped in marine vinyl marine vinyl is pretty useless but i will tell you wrapping the wood frame in it it makes it very 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 water resistant on top of uh, preserving it with enamel, which I would recommend just marine resin. If you're gonna do a wood frame, if it's your thing, you know, it's make it last long, marine resin it, and then go over it with marine vinyl, and that would make you a very, very nice solid core frame. But here we got rid of the underwood catch lips. Here I got more efficient ways, found better totes, ran really light totes in there, which later cracked. We knew that was a risk with how thin they were, but I mean, the weight savings, it was everything. To put a full kit in this boat and still be able to pick it up, which it was wider than the jumbo. This one I think was closer to 40 inches at the bottom. It's very wide, 36 to 40 inches. It was it was nice. And this is back when we thought pool noodles were still a really viable option and were cool, so we stuck them everywhere. This was foamed with styrene sheeting and pool noodles, like a mix. But there was quite a bit of foam in this boat, and that's good because the owner whose boat this was was the first person I ever truly sponsored. He was a fantastic fisherman. 
And, you know, after seeing some of the stuff he would go through, like, I thought he might be insane. Uh, really death-defying stats. And I consider myself a pretty hardcore. We'll go places. We'll go do dangerous things just to catch fish. And he just really puts us all to shame. So, I mean, this boat should have sunk several times. But I think because of the sheer amount of foam we did stick in it, um, it it was okay. It was also pretty light. I think for milestones reached, uh, this was, <laughs> we could pick it up. Yeah, this was with a deck on it. It wasn't going to get much heavier than this. We're going to put some carpet on it. What else? You know, it was it was able to be picked up and put in a truck bed by two people. And probably with dollies, you probably could have also done uh, very much the same thing. And that's really why I ended up calling it the Yak Killer. Because the bigger thing about the Yaks where, oh, they're really portable and you could put them here. And you can go places without having a trailer. And like, oh, you can just still do that with a tinny and I can have way more storage. Like, way better quality fishing with similar results. And actually, once you get into the 12, 14 foot kayaks, they start to get really heavy. They start to lose the, uh, I feel like the versatility factor starts to go away. If you don't store them right, if you don't do this, you can start having a lot of serious problems. So it starts to actually take two people to move a boat that big. This was also a better run at how I tried to wire the boat, but we still did stupid things like use standard uh, house grade wire and uh, did it work? Yes. We used a lot of things that worked. I think the conduit piping through the main walls, which I'm now trying to replicate today because of how useful it was now. I mean, ideas that I stopped using that I should have just been using all along, I stuck into this boat. I mean, I, that whole uh, little black box there is a battery box I cut in half to store all the electronics in a well right there, right in the middle. I figured that the middle was a really good point to store the electronics because if the boat, you know, pitched from the front or the back, you know, that's where the water is going to swell. But it's really hard for the for water to undertake the middle of the boat um, unless it's like really full. So I, I always try to stick my electronics toward the center or closer to the center. And that's the cooler thing here is that we made a we welded together an HTPE live well box out of a, you know, one of those Commander Tough boxes you get from Lowe's or wherever. We cut it up, and it was his, it was his idea to make a catch slip to keep the water from splashing out. And now it makes a little bit more sense to me where you look at those live wells in the bass boats where they have that, they have that catch slip. And so we kind of used a uh, propane torch and a spatula and, or scraper and a you know, a soldering iron and we stuck that thing all together and we put pumps here and there, did enough research on pumps. You know, Ryan from Fire and Fishing had his live well set up and he gave us a lot of insight so we knew at least what to use and how to use it. We got the Y gate feature from him, but I just got like the Y gate from like a hose and stuck it in there. And that's how we controlled it. Now we use the flow right uh aerator pump out combo nozzle, which completely puts the Y gate to shame. But back in the day it was pretty cool. We had it going here. And then out it goes and it vents out. It was a super tight fit back there. The gas tank had to go back there. Like it was just to the gritty T, everything that was in this boat. Here we are doing the shake test to see if the water's gonna splash out of the live well where we're undergoing waves or just normal waves. And then we did like a, a serious splash test because this mm -hmm. uh, lake out here is pretty moody. And for the most part, it, it maintained most of the water in pretty serious splash test. We later on tested this boat and I had videos up there for the general public, but you know, the stuff between this gentleman and myself kind of got a little tense after some, some disagreements on some things went down. And then later on his girlfriend got on YouTube and flamed up the, uh, the original video saying I was using them, taking all the credit. And so down the video went to avoid any of those problems. And that's unfortunate because they're pretty good videos, but we still have these. We still have stuff to show you here. And then this is an initial build. And the initial build got him through quite a bit. I mean, he really fished a lot of hours. I think most of us who maybe are weekend warriors or holiday warriors, and some of, have actu some of us actually fish more um, as a profession. I consider myself fairly like a semi-professional fisherman, not obviously in tournaments, but for social media. And this guy just really... He fished all the darn time. When he wasn't working, he was on the lake. I mean, he put this boat through its paces, so we really got to get a good testimony of how well everything worked. And for the most part, it it did okay. The totes did end up cracking later. The wiring went bad. We had to replace the wire within within less than a year. All the wiring was corroded and 
had a gross cancerous rot. And but by then my skill had uh, significantly improved. So then we obviously went and used all anchor marine wire. We redid a few things here, redid some broken stuff, retrofitted this, and then we added anchors later. And that was pretty cool. That was a pretty incredible feat. I had made these for the original Yakula that I was building out of my tracker topper, but I had pause to go back and retrofit this one because, I mean, it, it was at its point for the original kit needed a few upgrades. So we went and upgraded quite a few things to be a little bit more beefy and robust. And later on, uh, an elderly person wrecked into the back of the boat and ruined it. And then that's when there was a, a bunch of serious problems about how the boat's going to get fixed or replaced and then some disagreements on the ongoing sponsorship because of some liabilities. But during the heyday, this boat was seriously awesome. Fantastic. All right, so what do you guys think about all that? It's, I thought it was pretty good. But for somebody like myself who doesn't have the greatest balance as a human being, being able to fish on that boat on a, on a nice calm you know, day I thought it, it was all right. I'm pretty excited. And I want to make a bigger point is even though those are heavier and built out of wood, those are still truck bettable and able to be picked up by one person and done, you know, just with a set of dollars in the back and one here. They could have been done. It would have been heavier, more taxing, a lot more stress on the hull than what we're doing now, but it was still able to be done back then with way less build quality. So imagine what this new Yak Killer is going to be like. Wait for it. It's going to be awesome. Oh, <laughs>